G'day Brewers, Gavin here from the Homebrew Network. Today we're diving into a topic that confuses brewers more than almost anything in water chemistry, and that's alkalinity. I've been brewing for over 35 years, trained in brewing science and commercial brewing, and the whole point of this channel is to make stuff simple. This is part three in my brewing water series, so if you missed part one or part two, it is worth watching. They will make some of the terms in this video a lot clearer. And as always, there's a little bonus science at the end for those curious minds who enjoy a nerdy nightcap. If you skip that in part one or two, it's good to go back and have a look at that, or have not watched them at all. There'll be a link in the description to both videos. Let's break this down in simple brewing terms. pH versus alkalinity. pH and alkalinity are not the same thing. pH is the ratio of acid to alkalis or bases. Alkalinity is the amount of alkaline that is present. And that's two completely different things. Let me make this clearer with a couple of analogies. There's the car and caravan one I like. There's been some ones around that I just don't get, but the car and caravan one's are easy. Imagine you are towing a caravan. The car pulling it is like the acid, and the caravan is like alkalinity. This one's a bit weird, but it works. If the caravan is light, even a small car can move it. That is low alkalinity, and a tiny bit of acid can move it easily, shifts the pH. If the caravan is really heavy, the car really struggles. It can't move it so easily. That's high alkalinity, and the pH barely moves, even with a fair bit of acid. That is alkalinity resistance to lowering pH. The marbles analogy. This is the one I really like. This one makes more sense to me. They all work different for different people. Uh, if you imagine marbles, um, red marbles are acid, blue marbles are alkaline. One red and one blue marble gives you a neutral balance. I'll use pH here just to simplify things and we'll say that's neutral. But the alkalinity is tiny. So if we had one more red, one more acidic one, the pH would shift dramatically. If we had 10 red and 10 blue, still neutral reading 7 pH at the start, exactly the same pH as the other one, but if we add one red marble, the same amount of acid, it moves, but it only moves a little bit. If we add 100 red and 100 blue, still reads 7 pH neutral, but the alkalinity is huge. If we add one red marble, that same amount of acid, it doesn't move at all. Well, it'd move a tiny little bit, barely measurable. So pH is the balance, and alkalinity is the amount. Three definitions of alkalinity. Water treatment people use three definitions. Number one, alkalinity is the water's ability to resist pH change. Number two, alkalinity is water's ability to neutralize acid. In other words, how many bases are in the water that can mop up those hydrogen ions we've spoke about in other videos. In brewing, that is almost all bicarbonate. Number three, alkalinity is how much acid it takes to push the water down to pH 4.5. Below that, alkalinity is gone and pH falls very, very quickly. Your water report's alkalinity number is based on this pH 4.5 test. Um, it's the standard endpoint for total alkalinity tritation. Um, we'll go deeper into that another time. We don't really need to talk about that here. What alkalinity actually means for us brewers Alkalinity is your water's ability to resist a drop in pH. It comes from bicarbonate, carbonate, and a tiny bit of dissolved CO2, carbon dioxide. Uh, there is an important detail. In normal drinking water, that's uh, yeah, pH 7 to pH 9, uh, over 98% of the carbonate system is bicarbonate. So for brewers, alkalinity basically is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is the primary buffering system in brewing water. Need a drink. Why alkalinity matters. High alkalinity raises your mash pH. It can make pale beers harsh, dull, and grainy. Low alkalinity lets the mash fall easily, which is great for pale beers, but with your dark beers, it can fall way too low. That's why we have to try and raise them up a little bit. Very low alkalinity, around uh, zero to 30 parts per million, can make a beer taste thin or watery. 
moderate to high alkalinity, uh, 100 to 200 parts per million, helps buffer the acidity of roasted malts in stouts and porters, uh, and it prevents those acrid burnt flavours. Low alkalinity means easy pH control, moderate alkalinity balances your dark malts, high alkalinity is only useful if you're making concrete. That died that. How to adjust alkalinity? Uh, to lower alkalinity, use lactic acid, uh, phosphoric acid, acidulated malt, or you can dilute with RO uh, or distilled water. Um, prefer lactic or phosphoric. They are predictable, repeatable, and easy to calculate. This is going to get me in trouble. Uh, why not rely heavily on acidulated malt? Because its acidity varies between molsters uh, and between batches. Large amounts can add lactic flavor, and it makes mash pH correction really, really slow and imprecise. So uh, stick to the acids and you'll have much more luck. Uh, dilution, of course, works well uh, when you do not need a huge correction. Uh, if your alkalinity was, say, you know, 100 and you wanted it around 50, a simple one-to-one -one mix of tap water and RO water, or your tap water, and some RO or distilled water will get you close. There's an old-school way of boiling, and it works, but only to a certain amount. Um, you can remove alkalinity by boiling. Uh, you bring the water to a rolling boil. Some say to add chalk, but you don't really need to. They say it speeds things up, but you don't need to. Boiling alone will remove some alkalinity. Uh, it drives off the CO2, and once the CO2 is gone, the water cannot hold as much bicarbonate in it, um, and the calcium and bicarbonate will crash out as chalky solids to the bottom of your pot. But you really need to let it cool and leave it overnight. Uh, and pour the water off the top or drain it without disturbing the stuff on the bottom. If you, you know, you need to leave the stuff on the bottom or you've just ruined all your hard work. Uh, do it properly, uh, and this usually leaves you with around 60 to 90 um, parts per million alkalinity, where if you have high alkalinity, that will really help you. Uh, it's not exact, but it, it definitely helps. To raise alkalinity, use baking soda. It's the easiest and most predictable method. Look, you can use chalk, but it always gets mentioned, but it barely dissolves unless the water is carbonated. You have to put it in carbonated water. So it's really difficult to use correctly. If you don't, it just it, it doesn't mix in. Uh, slaked lime gets thrown around too. It works, but it's a bit more advanced. Um, it, it's easy to overcorrect, and it can be corro corrosive to your equipment. Um, just stick to baking soda. It this, this, it's just works. So in summary, pH is the balance, alkalinity is the resistance to lowering that balance, and bicarbonate is the superstar behind it all. In the next video, we'll look at how alkalinity interacts with hardness and how residual alkalinity, or RA, predicts mash pH even better. If this helped, clear things up, hit like, subscribe, and stick around for more brewing science breakdowns in future videos. This water series is gonna continue. There's a bit more to go through. Thanks for watching. Keep on brewing. Cheers. Big thank you, of course, goes out to my Patreons. Without them, these videos couldn't continue. Consider going and taking a look, um, and I'd be much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. Oh, you know, I, I don't like saying it. I know I should say it at the start like everyone else. I don't like boring people with it. But it's really important for us, and it doesn't cost you anything. So please do that. If you hit the bell, you know when the next water video comes out. I'm going to go through the whole thing. Um, I've, well, <laughs> I've done that many brewing courses, I, 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 I can't remember the names of them all. <laughs> uh, just because I love it. I love learning, and there's always something. And it, it's even if, no one knows it all. If you think you know it all, you're wrong. And what I enjoy about doing the different courses, I've repeated a couple, is because you'll meet a different teacher, a different person, and they'll have different methods, different ideas. Uh, everybody's different. There's no one that's right all the time and perfect. And so get vary your knowledge and you'll learn a ton more. And that's what I try and do all the time. It's all about learning. I never stop reading. I never stop learning. And uh, I want to take you on that journey and try and make it easy. Because some of it, some of it, even the most, some of the most famous people that, that, that teach things, they're, they're hard to understand sometimes. Um, often I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got through all of that in three quarters of a beer. 
I get so tongue-tied. That's the only reason you'll see the camera stop sometimes if you notice it, is I just get tongue-tied with words. It's all about the beer. Brewing better beer and consistent beer. Clear beer when you want it. Hazy when you don't want it. Hazy when you do want it. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Cheers. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.